Phil to Mission Control. Come in, Mission Control. Psh, uh, this is Mission Control, Phil. Uh, we read you loud and clear. Psh, I would... Oh. Greet... Greeting, science! Greeting, science! Greetings, Science Maximites! Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil McCordick, and today we're gonna be building an air-powered rocket. Too difficult, you say? Nonsense, it's easy. It's not like it's rocket science. Hey, it is rocket science. Cool! Here's what you need. You need a bottle and a cork. Make sure that the cork fits nicely into the bottle, and then you need an air pump, because you can't have an air-powered rocket without air. And on this air pump, you need a pin, the special kind that you use to inflate basketballs or volleyballs or stuff like that. Now, what you want to do is push the pin through the cork. You might want an adult's help for this. Push it through until it goes through on the other side, and then make sure you get a good seal with the bottle. Now you're ready to launch your rocket with air pressure. But first, let's do a few other things. Take your cork and put it in a tripod launcher. You can make this out of pencils or anything you want, as long as it stands up nice and solidly. And then, of course, you want to decorate your bottle so it looks like a rocket. This is my rocket. Pretty good, right? So stick the bottle on the cork like before, like that. And then you stick the pin in the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to inflate the bottle with air pressure, and then it's gonna launch. Okay, here we go. Uh, you know, rocketry really isn't something you should do indoors. Come on. will do nicely. <laughs> now, don't forget to do this with an adult and don't forget your safety glasses. Now set up the rocket in a nice big open area and make sure it's pointed away from you. And then what you do is you pump the air pump and it puts air into the rocket which pushes down on the water which will push down on the cork until eventually <laughs> so, be science maximites and come up with your own rocket design. Try different amounts of water, different fins, even a different size bottle. Try it for yourself and see if you can get one that goes higher than mine just did. All right, Sal, I'll see you next time. Oh, hey, how you doing? Let me guess, you got some work to do and you need it done easy, right? I mean, look at this book. I mean, you could pick it up, but what, are you gonna be some sort of book picker-upper person now? Is that all you're gonna do? Is that gonna be your life, just picking up books left, right, and center? No, you're smarter than that. You know what you need? A lever, like this. Now, I know what you're thinking, I know. You're thinking, hey, this is just a plank. You're right, you're, cause that's because you're smart. A plank can be a lever. All you need is two sides and a place for it to pivot, a fulcrum. It can be anything. Look at this. Bam! Now it's pivoting. I put the book on this side, and then I push down on that side. I'm doing work easy. Hey, look at me doing this work over here. If I want to do more work, I could move the fulcrum a little bit further over. Now I do lots of work, but I lift the book a lot further. Look at that. Whoa! Wow! Whoa! Yeah! Huh? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Huh? Huh? You don't like this lever? Don't worry. Hold on. I got another one for you here. Hey, take this stick. All you need is two ends and a place for it to pivot. Like this. Bam! Now, it's a lever. This side goes down. That side goes up. Down. Up. It's a lever. It's a lever. You want to make a catapult? Use a spoon. The place where the spoon pivots is the fulcrum. And now, it's a lever. It's a lever. It's a lever. Look at this lamp. Now, it's a lever. Scissors, two levers. Your forearm, it's a lever. Two ends, and the fulcrum where it pivots, yeah, the fulcrum can be at one end. Crazy. This fish, you guessed it. Now it's a lever. And now you know your levers. Mini Max! 
The interesting thing about bubbles is they're a gas surrounded by a liquid. So get some dish soap and some water, and then be science maximites and find things around the house that you can make bubbles out of. Just about anything that has holes will do. Or, mm -hmm. or I like this one. I call it the loud bubble. it out. I'm here at the Ontario Science Centre and this is Anthony. Hey Anthony. Hey, how's it going? Good. So you are amazing at bubbles. Uh, I am. I've been practicing for a while. Let's get started. Okay. You're going to make an okie dokie sign like this. Uh -huh. You're going to dip it right into our bubble solution. Make, come on, get right in okay, there, right, right in, in there. Make sure you get it all. Oh, that's, that's a little too much. Well, that's then good. I can make two. And then you're going to keep that okie dokie sign. You're going to blow very gently. Nice. I brought these two giant sticks here, and I don't know if you noticed, but I've got a smoke machine here. Right. So we'll turn that on, and then if you press that green button there, you're gonna shoot some smoke, and we're gonna try to catch that smoke in a giant bubble. You ready? Okay, and I'm gonna try to... Oh, that was so that was close. Great. Did you see wow. that one? You give it a shot. Nice! Oh, check yeah. that out! That was amazing! <laughs> that was huge. Try it again. Let's see if I can get the smoke so machine. Here we go. Go for it, go for it. Push right towards. Oh, check that out, you did it! Look at that, look at that! No! Smoke, and it, yeah. bounces. it bounces on the floor because the floor, it doesn't have any oils like our hands do. Isn't that amazing? That was oh great. my god, that was so cool. That was great. You know what I think we should do? What's that? Giant bubble, tons of smoke. Done. Okay, here we go. Let's do it, you ready? Giant bubble, tons of smoke, go. Yeah. Awesome! Oh my god, look at that! Woo! Amazing! Look at that! That's crazy! Max out bubbles! Well, there you go! Giant smoke filled bubbles! Awesome! Yeah! Hey, David, how you doing? Hey, good. Good. So, David's going for his Master's of Applied Science in Aerospace Science and Engineering. So, you know all about planes. I do. Great. Yeah. So, what does this have to do with planes? What is this? So, this is a water channel and it allows us to test airplanes in it before we put them in the sky. Great. We'll have my airplane and we'll just put it in here and we'll test it. Please. It's made of paper. Yeah. And in the water, it becomes soggy. Well, well, how do we test our paper airplane if we can't put it in the water? Well, this is a, a, a classic uh, airfoil shape. Yes. Now, is that what you call it, airfoil? An airfoil, yeah. So the cross-sectional shape of a wing is called an airfoil. OK. Uh, and that's what generates the lift. Fortunately, air and, and water are both fluids, so they behave in the same way. I could push ink into the water, and that's going to allow us to see how the fluid flows over the aircraft. So if you tilt its nose up a little bit, you'll be able to see that the shape of the airfoil is actually pushing the water downwards. Oh, yeah. You're and right. The, the ink doesn't go straight. It goes. It yeah, follows the it wing follows down. It follows the shape of the wing down and we have a lower pressure on the top of the wing and a higher pressure on the bottom of the wing, which pushes it upwards. Right, generating and that, lift. that creates lift. Exactly. So do you, you guys use this all the time in, in aerospace? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty Absolutely. neat. So uh, are you ready to design an even bigger plane, a giant paper plane? I'm, I'm confident we can do a good job. I am excited about it. Let's do it right now. Uh, the, the big paper's over this way, this way, okay. Here's the plan. Take a giant piece of paper and fold the exact same airplane we did in the lab. The small one flew, the large one should too, right? Well, let's find out. I believe we are ready to make our giant paper airplane. All we need is a giant piece of paper! Yeah! Okay, be very careful getting off it. Yeah! All right, let's fold it. Uh, nose on that side. Okay. Remember, we're folding the exact fold we did in the lab, only on a larger scale. We have a tape, a tape malfunction down here. But it's a lot harder to do with a giant piece of paper. Fantastic. That's pretty good. Okay. There. Perfect. Yeah. Giant paper airplane! Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, this doesn't look too much like an airplane. No, it's way, way too floppy. Yeah, but, I mean, what, maybe it just... Like, when I throw it, maybe it'll catch the winds, and then the wings will come up like that. Whoa. 
Uh, yep. Ma yeah. Maybe. Like, you know, I'll just... Uh, give it a try, Phil. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try. Give it a try. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Go for it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> wow. Right. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> oh, oh man. I think, I think we can make some improvements. It sort of uh, felt it sort of felt like a bed sheet. I feel if I just threw my lab coat, it'd probably look let me just see. Okay, ready? Yeah, it looks pretty much the same, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know this, but when you fold paper that big, it sort of behaves like fabric. Yeah, very, very floppy. Very floppy. What if we supported the plane, like we, we put struts or something in it, like um, like this stick. If we put it on the wings, it'll stop it from being so floppy. Right, right? and you right. can tape it on. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. We need, we need bigger, bigger sticks. Yeah. Really lightweight. Like, so uh, uh, like, foam? Yeah, stuff? Uh, and uh, like hollow tubes. Hollow tubes? Hollow tubes. Good. Those work good. So we'll, we'll put a whole bunch on there, we'll tape them on so that it doesn't flop around. Yeah. And we'll try to get yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Let's go. All right.